Good morning, everyone. I hope everyone can hear me. Today being Good Friday, I thought I should move away. That I'll take a different view. Normally, we take a view of the cross. Now, today, for the next few minutes, let's take a view from the cross. I should acknowledge that I have browsed the internet and taken the information from the internet and the contribution by various peoples I was able to put this across. The title of the sermon today would be A View from the Cross. You can see your screen, Anna. Please go ahead. Kindly do uh, slideshow. Yes. 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 Now you can change. This morning. We are going to go to the place where Jesus Christ was crucified, there at Golgotha. We are going to focus on the people gathered around the cross. The view that we normally take is looking at the cross. But the view that Jesus had from the cross, this amazing thing about this view from the cross is that even in the year 2020, we can still find the same kind of personalities that Jesus found then. And when you're looking at the cross, and a few people that gathered around the cross that day, let's remember some of them. First, Simon the Cyrene. Can you imagine how Simon felt? Think about it. Simon had come to Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover feast. He had traveled all the way from Cyrene, which is in north of Africa, some 1260 kilometers. Simon was coming from his lodging outside the city and had no idea that this strange event was about to take place. As he was watching Jesus stagger under the weight of the cross, Simon suddenly was grabbed by the soldier and forced to carry the cross. I am sure he was mad about the interruption. Undoubtedly, his attitude must have been one of unwilling involvement. There are many people today who are resentful that God would dare change their plans. We don't want things to happen to us by surprise that don't fit into our routine. We resent it when some circumstances over which we have no control suddenly changes our plans, especially if it involves pain and suffering and sometimes just investing some personal time, energy, resource in God's work. And when you're looking down from the cross, you see the second kind of persons, people there, Roman soldiers, gathered around the foot of the cross, where the soldiers who had crucified Jesus Christ. These rough Roman soldiers had crucified many people. Undoubtedly, many such Crucifixi crucifixions have been taken place in that time and these Roman soldiers had all the experience because when they had finished their work Jesus was hanging on the cross these soldiers got out a pair of dice and started a game at the foot of the cross 
they started to divide the garments of the cross. It seemed strange to us that any man could contemplate the dying of Jesus and carry on in such a way. But here were men who were far more interested in making some money than they were in the blood of Jesus Christ. Today, we too in the present time, 2020, have many people who are not at all concerned about the meaning of the death of Christ. Their whole concern is focused on making money and making profit. The soldiers stand forever as examples of those callous individuals who have no interest in the great story of the cross, who shrug their shoulders with indifference to anybody who tries to call their attention to what was really happening at the scene. Sometimes we might not be bothered about the money, but we are also not concerned about God works too. Next, the third category of people. Here were two men who had been arrested because of their acts of terror and violence. They were professional revolutionaries. They were angry men committed to philosophy of get. What you can get, get it any way that you can. It doesn't matter who gets hurt in the process. These two men looked upon Jesus as the same kind of man. They hated him because he was no more help to them than they could be to him. We do know that one of these men had a change of heart. One of these robbers asked Jesus to remember him when he came into his kingdom. Today, there are still many today that even at the point of death, they are still mocking and hating Jesus Christ. Cross are the priests in verse 31 and 32. The priests had been very frightened of Jesus before, but now they were very arrogant. Before they were threatened by him, but now what can he do to them? They screamed out words to Jesus to come down off the cross and then they would believe. They wanted Jesus to abandon the cross. Today, there are still religious leaders who would like us to abandon the cross. It is too gory and bloody, they say. But we as Christians must realize that the cross is at the very center of the good news of Jesus Christ. Whether they like it or not, the cross that Jesus Christ hung upon is the only way to our salvation. Jesus paid it all. The next group of people that we see around the cross is a crowd of women. These women were not gathering around the cross in hope, but in hopelessness. This picture of hopeless commitment. These women were there because of their love for Jesus. Today, there are many today who believe in God. They believe in the records of the scripture. They believe that God is there and that he works until it comes to that moment of crisis in their own lives. Then their hope is gone. They really have no hope that God actually will act in an hour of despair. Where their love remains, their hope and faith is gone. Their faith is strong as long as every, everything goes well. But when the bottoms drop, their belief in Christ is gone. Such kind of attitudes are still prevailing in us this day. The next kind of person that we see there is the centurion. 
in verse 39. The centurion who was in charge of the entire crucifixion, he probably would have been a pagan who would have probably believed in many gods, yet the cross brought to him awareness that what he was watching was no joke. He would have thought that there had been a terrible mistake made. This centurion sees that Jesus was indeed the Son of God. This thought is still representative of many people today. Today, some people who are Christians and even non-Christians realize that Jesus is the true God and come to him. They choose the salvation offered on the cross, believe. The next person that we see around the cross is Joseph of Arimathea. Here, Joseph of Arimathea, the secret disciple, a wealthy man, a prominent leader in the Sanhedrin of Jerusalem, looking for the kingdom of God. He was attracted towards Jesus and his teachings, but he was afraid to come out in the open. He did not raise his voice in the court where Jesus appeared before the Sanhedrin, but after the death of the Lord, when the body was hanging dead on the cross, Joseph took the courage and finally stood up to be counted. Today, a lot of us are like Joseph. We are willing to go along with our Christ until it gets to us, until it threatens us. Then we resist, we hide for a long time. But at the last moment, we stand up and say, yes, I am with him too. Thank God for all those who find the courage to stand up for what they believe. And lastly, we see about John, the loved disciple of Jesus Christ. From the cross, when Jesus saw his mother there and the disciple whom he loved nearby, he said to her, woman, here is your son, and to the disciple, here is your mother. From that time on, this disciple John took her into his home. John followed Jesus throughout his ministry. He did not abandon Jesus like the other disciples who were scared and fled. He was fearless even in the midst of crisis. He was responsible and was given the responsibility of Jesus' mother, Mary. Brethren, we have looked at few of the people, a view from the cross. On this day, let us examine ourselves as to which view we fit in. How are we appearing to Jesus on the cross? As when he looks on us, is there a forced involvement, an unwilling involvement, a roped into scenario like Simon the Cyrene? Are we indifferent to what is happening around us, just like the Roman soldiers? They were busy in making a fast buck. Or are we like the mockers and complainers, just like the two robbers or is there an attitude of unbelief on the work of cross that prevail in the hearts of the priests or are we like those women who had the love for Jesus Christ but were hopeless or are we like the centurion who believed in what he sees? Or are we like the secret followers of Jesus Christ? Or are we brave and responsible disciples of Jesus Christ? Just like John. 
On this day, I ask you to take a look at your lives. Let us focus on our Lord Jesus Christ, who suffered and died in the most inhuman way and has become the means where God offers salvation, life, joy, and hope to every human being. In spite of all our rebellion, shortcomings, mistakes, and sins, <coughs> God still loves us. Jesus Christ willingly took the road that would lead the cross, lead to the cross, following a road map that the Heavenly Father laid along from the beginning of time. On Good Friday, it is good for us to take a look at the road that has led us to the cross. Let us take a journey, a personal journey, to encounter Jesus ourselves, to meet the one who cares for each and every one of us, who loves us with an everlasting love. As we take this journey, let us examine ourselves and see our story may be different of how we have come to Jesus. But for all of us, the story is the same. It is the incredible love God has for all of us through Jesus Christ, our Lord our Savior and our Messiah, who died for us, taking all our guilt, all our shame, and all our sins onto himself and paid it in full. Brethren, the Bible says, the world is full of evil and the time is very short. In the time that is left for us, let us draw near to God, as James says in chapter 4 and verse 8. Let us draw near to God, and God will draw near to us. In the which is corrupt and has gone away from Christ, our loving Heavenly Father has provided a way to Jesus Christ. Thank you.